Movies with shared continuity are all the rage these days, and you've got one movie franchise to thank, Iron Man. When the Robert Downey Jr. starred action flick debuted in 2008, no one could have predicted the effect it would have on movies for years afterwards. Marvel Studios and director Jon Favreau laid the early groundwork for the Marvel Cinematic Universe by stuffing in as many Easter eggs and hidden references as they could. So for obsessive comic fans, the Iron Man franchise can be summed up in one word. Marvelous. The dude survives. Jeff Bridges' performance as bad guy Obadiah Stane in the original Iron Man may have been just fine, but everyone knows it wasn't the role for which he'll always be known. No, that distinction belongs to the dude from The Big Lebowski. As it turns out, the effects guy on Iron Man agreed, and added small tributes to the dude in Stane's secret computer files, which feature fine print dialogue from The Big Lebowski. Additionally, the weapon Stane sent to the bad guys went on a ship called Lebowski. Those details really tie the scenes together, man. Or do, or don't. In the beginning of Iron Man, Tony Stark is kidnapped by a terrorist group known as the Ten Rings. Stark's captors discuss their plan and their secret partnership with Tony's friend, Stane, right in front of him, spoiling the whole movie before it can really even begin. But only if you speak or do, the national language of Pakistan. Most Western audiences were none the wiser. Speaking of the Ten Rings, Ten Rings to rule them all. The first Iron Man flick would eventually spawn a franchise, but the filmmakers didn't know that at the time. There was no way to know when or if we'd ever really get to see the longtime magic ring-wearing Iron Man villain Mandarin make it to the big screen. So instead of featuring the bad guy with handfuls of bling, the filmmakers instead decided to pay tribute to the Mandarin by naming the terrorists after him, which is way less cool than having a street named after you or something. That song rings a bell. Still on the subject of rings, when Tony's pal Rhodey gets a call from him on his cell phone, we can hear a very unique ringtone. That little tune is actually the theme song from the 1966 Iron Man cartoon. Black Sabbath's Iron Man probably would have been a little more badass, but maybe a little too on the nose. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Fans saw the first big hints in a larger Marvel Cinematic Universe when they spotted a familiar sight on Tony Stark's workbench. Sitting along with unfinished projects and other junk is none other than Captain America's famous patriotic shield. The shield shows up again in Iron Man 2, while a couple of Captain America comic books also make an appearance in Howard Stark's trunk. Both movies predate the legendary superhero's first cinematic appearance in 2011's Captain America The First Avenger. Bambi Arbogast In the comics, Bambina Bambi Arbogast has been a valued Stark employee for decades. During her first appearance in 1979, she helps Iron Man defeat Whirlwind in the middle of her own job interview, before going on to play a key role in a number of other storylines. You can spot Bambi, played by Margie Moore, in Iron Man 2, when she's seen working for Pepper Potts, the new CEO of Stark Industries. Bambi's also the one who ends up unwittingly hiring Black Widow, for which we can all be grateful. She's also heard off-screen in Iron Man 3, reminding Pepper of her appointment with Ultra Creep Ultra Killian. Say hello, Stan. Spotting Stan Lee's cameos has become a favorite pastime for Marvel movie fans, and his appearances in the Iron Man movies are some of the best. In the first film, he shows up as Hugh Hefner, with a beautiful woman on each arm. In Iron Man 2, he can be glimpsed as a pretty uncanny stand-in for legendary talk show host Larry King. And in Iron Man 3, it's back to the babes, as Lee pops up for a moment as a very, uh, enthusiastic beauty pageant judge. Those are probably all way better for his health than some of his other Marvel movie cameos. You know, like all those times he almost got killed. Lady Man-Thing In Iron Man 3, Ellen Brandt is a war veteran recruited into Aldra Killian's army of extremist soldiers. And, spoiler alert, she's killed in an explosion after attempting to get some sensitive documents from Tony Stark. It's a fairly minor role, but hardcore Marvel fans might have recognized Brand's name from the comics, where she's the ex-wife of Ted Salas, better known as the Man-Thing. In the original story, the duplicitous Brand is actually responsible for Salas' swampy transformation, who attacks and disfigures her in retaliation, a detail nodded to in the movie with the scars on her cheek. Most Marvel fans would agree, though, that Ellen Brand is a pretty obscure reference, but it's still probably a good thing Iron Man 3 screenwriters didn't just call her Mrs. Man-Thing. <laughs> Napping the future of Marvel when Tony meets with Nick Fury at the end of Iron Man 2 to discuss the emerging Avengers initiative, viewers can see a map marking S.H.I.E.L.D.'s locations of interest in the background. It's the kind of thing you need to pause and zoom to really get a good look at, but it's loaded with pretty obvious references to the comics. These spots include a location in Africa near the fictional Wakanda, home of the Black Panther, one near Norway where the Tesseract is found by the Red Skull in Captain America the First Avenger, another near Greenland where Cap crashes the Skull's ship, and one in New Mexico where Thor's hammer had just turned up. All of this was way back in 2010, before Marvel really started rolling out its Marvel Cinematic Universe phases, so it proves that Marvel's planning has been tighter than Black Widow's outfit all along. Hulking out. During the same meeting between Stark and Fury in Iron Man 2, particularly observant viewers can see a television in the background, tuned to a news report being delivered live from the campus at Culver University. 
Not coincidentally, Culver is where the Hulk faced off against Thunderbolt Ross and Emil Blonsky in The Incredible Hulk, which puts the events of that film as happening in the same time frame as Iron Man 2 in the Marvel movie timeline, but still a few years before Tony would deliver the old Hulkbuster jackhammer to Hulk's face. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know which hidden Iron Man secret was your favorite.